Hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Mother's Basement, and this video is No Guns Life. Deep and dumb. So when I watched uh, the seasonal anime videos that came out, and they were discussing what to watch, this keeps coming up, and I really want to know what it's about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my god, the main character's got a gun for a head. Cool. But I like that Mother's Basement's on this video now, which is going to go into, hopefully, what it is actually about and why we should check it out because I do want to check it out but I don't want to waste my time with it just because of the whole concept of it I love the design as well I love that the main character looks like something out of apple seed which I've not seen for ages you know like the companion that the woman has uh, with the robotic exo well he's anyway that's not the part of the discussion we need here why do I need to watch Got No Guns Life? Deep and dumb this check it out like ogres and onions and parfaits too, many mm -hmm. of the best anime have layers. Beneath neat high concepts, strong characters, and oh. fun action scenes lie hidden Weezo. depths, themes, and messages <sighs> for dedicated viewers to uncover and decipher through careful consideration of a show's constituent parts. That might sound intimidating, boring, or pretentious depending on your tastes, but therein lies the brilliant trick that makes these layered shows so good. Mm -hmm. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Neon Genesis Amazing. Evangelion, Amazing. One Punch Man, Amazing. these anime are all eminently accessible. They speak to a primal part of our brain that wants to see cool people doing cool things and yes. making cool explosions happen in the process. A part of our brain that wants to imagine and escape to worlds of possibility beyond our own. Oh my, they make a concerted everything. effort to be fun, first and foremost. But beyond that, if you care to look, you'll find that each is about something more. Uh -huh. Full Metal Alchemist is a cool shown in action thing about a steampunk cyborg wizard who kicks the shit out of other wizards That's and monsters really not just what it's about, though. It's also an exploration of how wallowing in grief and refusing to to accept loss can cost us everything that we still have. It's also yep. also a pointed cautionary tale about how those in power will maintain it by consuming the lives of those beneath do them anything. until nothing is left. Some shows make their intent more obvious than others. Evangelion is famously an exploration of how Hideaki Anno used his otaku obsessions to both fight and feed his, his depression. depression. The last mm. two episodes of the anime practically shout that message at you as the cool robot shit fades away to be replaced with Shinji's negative self-talk variety hour. <laughs> yeah. But there's still deeper layers to be found even under that. Pay attention to those last two episodes in the movie, and you'll see Anno's whole mental landscape laid bare through animated symbolism and other means. But you'll also see some of the coolest big fucking robot fights ever put to film. That is Layered true. narratives allow these shows to entertain laymen, anime analysts, and everyone in between and beyond. And No Guns Life is a brilliant example of that approach. Class. Okay, cool. Glorious high octane balls to the wall action as i said in my fall anime rundown no guns life is an anime about a man with a gun, gun for, for a head. head explode punching trains with his revolver fists to save kidnapped children from evil business robots and sexy cyborg assassin nuts. Huh. zany as all that sounds the show presents that story with utmost sincerity and not even a hint of irony Gunhead oh, wow, okay. detective man Inui De Juzo like, is serious. a fully realized human being with goals, values, anxieties, and flaws. He's also a hero who uses his strength to protect the weak from those who lord their power over them. No Gun's Life is an anime about a man with a gun for a head. Mm -hmm. A former soldier, or living weapon might be a better word. A man whose life was conflict and combat from day one until one day it wasn't. And he had to figure out on his how own to how to live after for that. himself. Wow. A man who tries to do good by his neighbors, using his power to keep the criminals who might hurt them at bay. A man whose gruff demeanor and literal cold metal exterior belies a metaphorically beating heart yearning for real human connection. Hmm. A man who sees a bit of himself in a young boy who's been chopped up, experimented on, mechanically augmented, and left immobile but still ardently refuses to just be a tool. Oh, wow. A man who thinks that maybe, with his no-bullshit brand of guidance and help, that boy could find freedom in a brighter tomorrow. He is Gun Dad, and I love him. The world that gave Juzo his 40 caliber cranium is likewise fully realized. A dystopian future where cybernetic enhancement is commonplace, but the transhumanist potential of the technology has given way to a dehumanizing reality. Hmm. Common people fear the extended, while elites exploit them. Some as slave labor, others as a captive marketplace, pressed into this brand loyalty really by a need good. for continuous maintenance, medicine, and replacement parts, with potentially incompatible black market junk from the Yakuza being the only alternative. Right. 
wow. don't like Apple and Google owning your whole music library now? Well, what if they owned your arms, your eyes, the specific rhythm of your heartbeat? What if by taking oh. your phone to a third-party repair shop, you risked incurring a fatal seizure as punishment? Yeah. Now, what if you needed those repairs to live, but couldn't afford the real deal? Oh, by exploring sugar. these questions, No Gun's life makes its cyberpunk world feel chillingly real. And that is the second layer. A world you can believe in, full of characters hmm. you want to learn more about. A like story where the future could possibly really go without for, the, no it, like, over the, the topness. Against him may be, and how ridiculous his manner of dealing with them is. None of this added narrative meat makes the show any less ridiculously fun and awesome than its premise promises it will be. Mm. But it's all there for you to enjoy if you want to become a hardcore No Guns Life fan. And if you want to dig deeper still, out. there are further layers to go. Greater points that the series is driving toward with both its nakedly awesome silly concept and the surprisingly delicate world building that's the animation it. No Guns well. Life is wow. an anime about a man with a gun, gun for a head. <laughs> a gun slave unit whose entire identity has been supplanted by a singular function. Trapped in a capitalist nightmare world where people like him are literally things for the rich and powerful to use. To own and use. Right. Be that in the form of government manufactured human weapons, corporate owned mercenaries and servants, or for the truly unfortunate, biomechanical office equipment. A hmm. world where employees and their families, from salary men all the way up to CEOs, are property resources to be extracted and exploited at the corporation's sole discretion for the corporation's sole benefit. While the common man outside the company lives in illusory freedom, dependent on consumable goods that their millionaire masters can cut off in an instant should they step out of line. A world that, for all its fancy doodads and cool metal bits and bobs, feels uncomfortably familiar, because in many ways it is a logical, if somewhat exaggerated extension of the one we live in now. Hmm. On that note, the robots who get to decide whether I have a stable career or not currently aren't showing my videos to as many people as they normally do. It's because a bit odd, isn't it? The subscription fee, right yeah. Going on vacation and putting up a bunch of guest videos that were going to underperform a bit even in the best circumstances. So I would greatly appreciate it if those of you who are watching could leave lots of comments and if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button as well just to get my channel back on people's feeds. Like that moment Getting of shameless the, begging just um, now and also link basically in the description and leave a like, like on the original video guys. This anti-capitalist messaging isn't particularly subtle. Man, in just its second episode, this last couple of weeks. the show trots out Hugh Cunningham, a pudgy, gleefully cruel corporate crony with a fully human body that he's all too proud to own, who lords his control of the medicinal cigarette supply over Juzo, huh. threatening him with agonizing dysfunction and a slow, painful death should he fail to comply with the Beryurin Corporation's demands, but presenting those threats under the guise of a peaceful, equitable negotiation. A fair trade on paper, a shakedown in practice, facilitated by police officers who seem at first to be stopping Juzo's vandalism for the public good, but who are in fact, like the detectives we meet in episode one, merely enforcers of the corporate status quo. Oh, damn. Like I said, it's not particularly subtle. It's hmm. only thanks to Juzo and his back alley mechanic Mary's forward thinking and class consciousness, <laughs> their awareness of the true leverage that the corporations hold over them, that this plan is foiled. As we learn at the episode's end, Mary had the foresight to replicate the medicinal blend of the cigarettes that Juzo needs, though without their oh, so we need flavor. Them likely running afoul of a few patents in the process, but giving Juzo a bitter taste of freedom by saving him from a deadly consumer dependency. If they'd followed the law, they would have been fucked, and Tetsuro would be in Hugh's hands already. It's a philosophically fascinating and prescient plot point, but presented with all the gusto and bombast we demand of our big dumb sci-fi anime. Juzo demonstrates that he cannot and will not be owned by obliterating the corporate jackboots pressed into his back in a glorious laser light show Whoa. before staring down his would-be oppressor with cool-headed, utterly badass conviction. Whether you agree with or even recognize the philosophical argument it's making, you can't deny that this moment and the entire show that contains it is above all else cool as all hell. 
Contrary to what you might expect, these elements of the show don't take away from its ability to deliver on those fun, visceral thrills, cool. nor do its goofy design sensibilities and over-the-top premise dumb down its greater message. Pure entertainment and thoughtful allegory are often framed as being at odds with each other in media. That's the crux of the whole turn-your-brain-off-and-have-fun philosophy. But those two sides of No Gun's life support each other, amplifying their respective effects. No Gun's Life is an anime and a manga with something to say. In order to say that effectively, it needs to dig into the meat of its individual it. like, characters. I ignore the fact that it's so stupid the character has this and just building. play it These serious. requirements also have the effect of making its goofy premise feel believable and serious, That's which brilliant. only makes the surface-level goofiness more entertaining for new viewers. And as you get invested in those elements, they only give you more reason to care about the outcomes of its already cool action scenes. At the same time, the just inherently fucking rad concept of a man made of guns serves as a surprisingly it's cool. ingenious symbol of the really dehumanizing cool. effects of late stage capitalism. The way that as wealth accumulates and wealth extraction strategies become more optimized and efficient, everything and eventually every one becomes a product, a commodity. I say on a platform that lets me sell my opinions about anime to you while it simultaneously collects data on your tastes and viewing habits hmm. to sell to advertisers so that they can more easily sell you other things. And unlike this video format, where just making that statement probably made a lot of you uncomfortable and a few viewers, I'd wager, pretty angry, by packaging those ideas up in cool, fun action scenes and an interesting sci-fi world, it it No Gun's believable. Life is able to prompt its viewers to consider them from a comfortable distance without ever feeling like they're being lectured to. Huh. Like its high-caliber hero, an efficient marriage of narrative form and function, substance within style and vice versa. An anime about what it really means to be a man with a gun, gun for a head. head. I only hope that one day I'll be able to write something halfway near as incredible as No Gun's Life, which isn't something I ever thought I'd say about that's the show crazy. before I watched it. But that's the other nice thing about these stories with layers. They so often come as a pleasant surprise. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing, signing out, out from, from my, my mother's, mother's basement. Very interesting. It starts, seems... Well, it... <laughs> The style as well seems very, to me, like, Ghost in the Shell-ish as well. I don't know, like, it's got a lot going on, by the looks of it. And for it to have a dark undertone in the story, I love that. It's like, come with the most ridiculous concept, and make it grim and dark and believable. Awesome. I really need to check that out. Brilliant. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. What did you guys think of that? What did you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe already. Leave comments down below. Let me know I should watch and discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. I saw you guys next time. Bye. Wow, the light went out on my Xbox at the right time. There we go.